Okay, so let's let's finish up this part of the conversation and then we'll talk whole group and then we'll grace with our separate groups. Um, okay, so where were we? We were talking about All right. So Allison. <laughs> All right, so um, great. Okay, so when we let, let's actually do this. Let's go to, let's pull up your tracker, and I want to talk through some of the things that I saw when I was looking at your tracker before I went into your classroom to observe. And, and then I want to share with you like the three major things that I was looking for um, based on what we had been talking about and based on what um, I kind of knew I should look for when I came in your classroom, and then I'll tell you what I, what I saw. Um, but before I do all of that, what, what are the things that were popping out to you like what what are the things that popped out to you with your data because you reflected about it you asked you like you answered certain questions for me before this conversation um like what were the major things that were popping out to you about which kids were struggling or what things kids were struggling with because i want to see if you saw some of the same things i just feel like the kids who always get it get it and the kids that never get it never get it mm -hmm. and that like when you were there i know it's one of my worst days ever um but again i saw like students who usually master everything we're mastering and the students who weren't still weren't yeah i mean i know in your i mean like we talked about this beforehand but before i came to your classroom i was like she really has two distinct groups right here like she has a group of kids who are all at the you know 80 percent mastery or above and we definitely should make sure that when we go through your tracker if we have questions about specific numbers, like there were a couple of numbers that was like, hmm, get out 199 on the test, like we just want to make sure that mm -hmm. you're entering in the numbers correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but like, if this is the most accurate data that we have right now, like I was looking at your groups and I was like, you, you basically have a group of really high kids, mm -hmm. right, you know, and then you have a group of folks who are like almost there, sort of, you know, they're in the 70s, yeah. the 80s, um, and, yeah, it's not and like I was wondering about why, why do you think it might be? Yeah, it's not like it's like students who are getting like hundreds and students who are getting like 12%. It's like students who usually get in the 80s, 90s are getting it, and the students like in the 60s and 70s are staying there. And I don't know what I'm doing different. Like, I don't know like what I'm doing in my whole group that's working for that group and not the other group. And then when I break them up into groups, like I think they're getting it, and then I give them the independent practice, and it's still like not fully there. So tell me, let's talk about a couple of specific students because I think that might be helpful for a second. So tell me about like the group that Amari's in or, you know, um, Jade or even Jordan. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean like Jade and Jordan, they're just always, like I can tell that they're just like always on task, always asking questions. Um, I, they're not a behavior concern. They work really hard. Um, and that's most of the way for that group, not 100% because Samaya also doesn't always follow directions and talks back and she's off and on as you can see in the data also. Um, and then some of the other students like Kittis and Kenneth, um, sometimes I feel like they're just not with me when we're doing things and I'm constantly trying to bring them back in and it's sometimes just like bringing them back in but they're not being brought back in and then also doing the work, they're just kind of listening or not making distractions. It's interesting that you point out this bring, like they're not with you. Because when I came and saw you in action, mm -hmm. one of the things that I noticed was like, you would tell your kids to go and do stuff, mm -hmm. and then they would go do stuff, and I wasn't quite sure that they were with you. Like when I was looking at this high group, like they were doing some stuff, but they weren't really practicing correctly on yeah. the stuff that you were asking them to practice. Yeah. Um, I guess that goes back to that. I, I just don't always do that. I guess I just don't always know, like, once I do my lesson, how to then figure out. I guess I just sometimes assume, like, they got it when I'm doing some of the practice together and they've been consistently performing, that, like, they're, when I split up, they're just usually in that group. And I just need to really focus my energy on the group where they just never seem to know how to do the skill that we're learning. And so I'm not over there when they're doing the practice, so sometimes I miss, maybe, what they're doing. And then when I focus on, like, this group, I'm also not seeing... <laughs> But then when they go to the independent practice, that it's helping either. So it's like I don't know. I guess like because I just don't know how to split my kids up and then how to give them practice that's they could practice, but also I can correct it because how can I correct it if I'm working with another group? I'm just like not trying to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I kind of I don't know if it's an issue of like how do you split your kids up because you obviously have information to, to determine. 
determine which kids are where for certain things, but I remember when I was watching you in action and not seeing you actually know that you should be monitoring what people were doing in individual yeah, groups. I, Is it that you actually just didn't know how to do that or you just didn't think that it was important or? Well, on the day you came, like I said, it was kind of my worst management day. But I feel that sometimes when I'm doing, when students are practicing, I'm just kind of monitoring to make sure kids are on task because a lot of times they're not on task and I'm trying to just get them on task as opposed to, you're right, maybe when I work with each student or I'm walking around or something where then like if when I'm seeing something I need to then be able to provide support perhaps then. But I feel like once I go to work with one student, I then look up and smile is yelling at someone and I can't work with the student when that's happening so then I don't know how to like use my time during I guess guided practice to then ensure students are practicing but just ensure students aren't making trouble and it's like between those two things where I just don't know how to, to handle both of them. Mm. And that's why sometimes I'm just kind of like that. I mean here's here's my thinking right like the reason why I brought up the, what I saw when I was in your classroom and, and, and because I was looking at specific groups of students I kind of want to see like how you were interacting with each of these groups. Mm -hmm. um, the, thing, the reason why it sort of stood out to me that, man, these kids are still doing well, mm -hmm. relatively speaking, yeah, yeah. even though you're not monitoring practice the way you probably should be and they're, still, they're not practicing correctly at all times. Mm -hmm. Like, the reason why that sort of struck me was when I looked at your tracking data is your kids start to take on more and more difficult things. Yeah. Your class actually goes down. I mean, yeah. like, for these word problem things that you, that you said are, like, actually uh, more important to you, yeah, I know, you know, mastery is like at 67%, 59%, well below your class average. And I kind of wonder, you know, for those, you, you have, you obviously have a group of kids who, if you do nothing for them mm -hmm. at this point, and they're just learning the baseline level of stuff, it seems like they can master that, right? Mm -hmm. But when you actually have them tackle the things that you say are more important to you, right? You, you, when you talk in yeah. your vision, you talk about this word problem stuff, and you talk about your kids, you wanting your kids to be able to explain their thinking, well, Seems like a part of the, the stuff that has to happen in Unit 4 could tie into that somehow. And I'm kind of wondering, like, when you teach more difficult material, the fact that it's more difficult material coupled with also the fact that you're not really monitoring the way they're practicing, I wonder if that's inhibiting them from being as successful as they could be. But I want to pause there for just a second because that might not be the case. That's just my initial theory. Um, but I, I kind of want to get your take on, like, when you taught these lessons, what happened on those days? Like, walk me through you know, how you plan, so when, walk me through what the lesson looked like. Well, when I did word problems, I guess I just, because I feel that some of my kids are at a reading level where it's below where the word problem level is, that I made this, like, thing where it was, like, put this part of the problem here, and this part here, and this part here, and this part here, and underline this and circle the number, and I realized, like, I was giving them maybe tricks without really, I guess, really teaching them how to figure out what a problem's asking and then what operation would then be aligned to that but I think this was part of the time of the year when I was starting to get better assessments and that's when I like reached out to Julia and I reached out um, I know like Shannon also and I feel that maybe my assessments didn't match necessarily how I was assessing them or seeing if they understood it during the week that I taught that unit and so and I guess that goes back to my whole thing of like, I'm just not really sure how to make sure I know what they're supposed to do, but I get so many different things that I'm supposed to be doing from the teacher next to me and then trying to figure out better ways because sometimes I feel the assessments I get at my school. I mean, you saw that first one that we went through and it was kind of just like a second grade level. And so I think one thing was, that was the first time I tried using a harder assessment and maybe I got the assessment after I planned the unit. Um, and then, or when I got those teachers' plans, and the other pieces, I don't know how to teach third graders how to solve word problems when they're struggling doing the skills like the addition and subtraction, multiplication, division that are involved in it without the words, and then also like then how to read the words and understand what it's asking. Like blew my mind of like I didn't realize that that would be so as challenging as it was. Okay, so let's pause there. Um...